Hey everybody, Michael Pavlovich here, and in this video we're going to talk about how to edit the facial shapes that come with your character creator character, uh, as well as creating your own custom shapes. Now, you don't need any plugins. It's either going to be using character creator to edit those shapes or create a custom shape, uh, or your favorite vert push-in program, Max Maya Modal Blender Cinema 4D. We'll go into ZBrush in this video. All of these methods available to us to edit the face shapes for character creator. To start this, we're going to use a character we created by taking an old Dynamesh bus sculpt and transferring it to CC Topology uh, using Headshot 2.0. Definitely check out that video if you want to know more on that process, because by transferring the sculpt details to the Character Creator Topology, we can take advantage of that built-in functionality that Character Creator has to offer. What we'll be focusing on today is basically we took a Character Creator Neutral Head Topology, push the verts around until we had a goblin vampire thing. And look at this, we got free facial animation with it. Keep in mind though, that when you're changing those neutral head verts into a big drastic changes for your unique character, there may be some shapes that come with that neutral head that may need a little bit of tweaking. Maybe you've got teeth poking through or tongues or eyeballs not positioned quite well. This is gonna show you how to fix all of that. Or in the case of stylized characters, really pushing these shapes and features of the face for each shape for a super exaggerated look. In fact, you can even create non-standard expression shapes from scratch using completely unique topology, uh, like our dinosaur friend here. Luckily, shape adjustments are super easy. There's a number of different options available to us, so let's dive in. Really quickly, first let's talk about what the difference is between shapes and expression wrinkles. So when I move my uh, brow up, you're gonna see a wrinkle appears and that's because I got lots of real life geometry. Our character here on the screen, not so much. So if I want to say, for example, go in here to the motion tab, go in here to edit facial and we're going to go to the muscle section and I'm gonna double click to clear my selection. I'm gonna grab one brow here and just pull this up. You're gonna see when this brow goes up, wrinkles appear. However, if I go over here to the expression wrinkle tab, you're gonna see there's an activate expression wrinkle. If I turn that off, you're gonna see those wrinkles disappear. That's just a texture map being loaded in. If you want more information on this or how to create your own custom expression wrinkles, we got a great series in here, Real Illusion Character Creator, the Character Creator Face Pipeline. You can go in here and learn all about what our expression wrinkles are, how to create your own custom ones using the Face Tools plugin. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll also see how we turn this old sculpt uh, from a Dynamesh into CC topology and then started animating with it. So definitely check that out if you're interested in that workflow. Now back to shapes and expression wrinkles. Again, if I start lifting this eyebrow up now with expression wrinkles off, you'll see the eyebrow shape moves up, but those wrinkles don't pop in. Again, those are just textures being blended in when those shapes hit a certain point. So if we wanna see those verts moving around, let's go to our scene tab. Let's do the drop down menu here and we'll change this to wireframe on shaded. So now we can see if I bring this back as we're moving, let's go ahead and do uh, reset to zero. We'll move both brows up and down. You're gonna see the these verts are what's moving, that's the shape. And then these expression wrinkles are just a texture map being loaded in and blended in based on where those vert positions are. So let's go ahead and put this back to normal. And that is the difference between shapes, big geometry changes and expression wrinkles, which are textures being blended in when those verts hit a certain point. You'll also notice while we're in the edit facial tabs here, there's expressions you can just go through here and you can just dial in, you know, happy expressions or angry expressions. Uh, and you can also go in here to the modify panel and in here you'll see, for example, jaw open. There's a jaw open shape. And if you open his mouth and you're like, it's an okay jaw open, but I really wanna make changes to this. You can't do it in here. This is just showing you the shape. Where you can make those changes is the facial profile editor. And so that we can have a little bit more fun, I'm going to open another project. And for the initial part of this video, I'm actually just going to be going over the basic steps that are in this Real Illusion video. So I'm going to put this link in the description and you can go and watch that movie if you'd like. Then we're going to tack on some GoZ functionality using ZBrush, which has some really powerful, awesome tools you can use in there. Again, for this, I'm going to use the stylized character we made for our Face Tools livestream demo, the one with the creepy vampire who had an unhealthy uh, obsession with our handsome chap here. So the first things first, let's go to the Motion tab, and you're going to see there's a Facial Profile Editor button in here. If I click this button, you're going to see not much is going to change. It's actually just turning on and off this tab for the Facial Profile Editor. You can go ahead and click that tab. There's your Facial Profile Editor. You can also go up here to window, hit F8 or click this. And that again is your facial profile editor window. So just like when we were in the edit facial, 
We're now in the facial profile editor. If we go up here to edit expressions, go ahead and turn this on. You're gonna see your character's gonna snap to a T pose. And now we are editing the shapes that make up our character's facial expressions. So for example, when we were in the uh, jaw open for the edit facial, now when we do jaw open, we'll still get the same jaw open, but look at all these weirdo options we have in this window in order to allow us to make changes to this shape. Just to kind of give you a quick overview of this panel over here, there is a, just like in the Morse tab, there's a currently used tab. So for example, again, if we go to jaw open, then we go over here to currently used, jaw open is going to be in there. If you put that back down to zero or use the double click the uh, name here in order to switch it between 100 and zero and you go out of there and then back, it's all gone because it was set to zero. Favorites, of course, is still in here. Uh, there's an expression section here you can select, and this is literally everything you can change. Uh, and then over here you have your subcategories if you want to make it a little bit easier to kind of search through. Uh, and don't miss these down here. These are visemes. So if we click here on this top area, these are all the visemes that your character has. You're going to see it's an eight by seven phenome pair. That means you're going to have eight lip shapes and seven tongue positions. Also, don't overlook this batch import up here at the top. I'm not going to cover this process for the video, but you can edit your facial shapes in an external program and batch import them into Character Creator using this drop down menu. We're going to do all of our editing within CC or using the Go Z button, but I did want to show you this alternative. Now down here at the bottom of the facial profile editor, you're going to see an expression tools section with four different ways to modify your shapes. Uh, if we go in order here, it's edit mesh, open modify morph go z and proportions we're going to start with the really easy one and that is this open modify morph one we're going to use this to really push our pre-existing shapes into the next level basically uh, we're going to start simple let's go up here to the brow section we're going to do this brow raise inner left now you're going to see right here is a little link icon if i turn that on you're going to see brow raise all the brow raises these four right here are all all these links went green and now when I pull one slider all four are going to change you can change multiple sliders at once we're going to get into that next but for now what I'm going to do is turn this all the way down we're going to turn off that link icon and we're just going to change this brow raise inner left shape uh, right there so with brow raise inner shape set to 100 let's go down here and we're going to click this morph button what that's going to do is open up our morph tab and you're going to see this drop down menu is already set to expression that means in previous videos, what we've done is we've gone through and we've made morph changes to our base. So for example, in the big beefy boy that we made, uh, we made him have a baby head and baby hands and that, those were big base changes. So we made those changes and then the expressions kind of worked with the baby head now could do emotions and stuff like that. In this case, what we're doing is we're only changing the verts on these expressions. So for example, with the expression selected, we're going to go down here to actor expressions, open this up, and we're talking about brow raise. So let's go down to the brow section here. And you can see right here at the top is we have an inner L high. So that's our inner left high. And you're going to see here is our default brow raise inner set to 100. If we want to over crank that, I can take the slider and pull it up. If I really want to over crank it, I can set this to 200 if I want. But we'll go ahead and double click this and we'll set this back uh, to 100. So we'll just go ahead and over crank this left shape. And again, we're not making any changes to any of our base geometry. We're only making changes to the expression of our brow verts, basically. So with that set to 100, we're going to go back to our facial profile editor and we're going to click this little electricity icon that is quick update. So we're going to hit that button. It might, I don't think it'll default to split part. It'll probably default to our only current slider. And that's what we want to use. Even though we do have four linked options, we only made changes to this top one. So go ahead and set that to only current slider, hit OK. And what that's going to do is update this brow raise inner left at 100 to now be over cranked. So now when I pull this slider uh, all the way up, it's back, it's, it's actually set to where that morph uh, was. You also notice that the inner left high is set to zero again. So if you wanted to over crank this even more, you can just do that whole process again. Now you're gonna notice there's a brow raise inner right. And if we crank that one up, it doesn't quite get as high as that brow raise inner left. It's totally easy to fix if it's a pre existing expression. All you gotta do is take your brow raise inner left put it all the way to 100 and then click this little mirror expression data icon that will give it a second and that will take those verts and move it over so to the right hand shape. So now brow raise inner right is over cranked and brow raise inner left is over cranked. So let's go ahead and we'll turn on this link icon and we're going to pull that all the way down to zero so we're left with a neutral face. If you want to make sure you can remember go to currently used and make sure that's zeroed out. 
So now let's go down here to mouth blend and you're gonna see we have a mouth pucker option. So let's go through here and I'm gonna, again, this time I'm gonna turn on the link option and this is going to take all four of these mouth pucker shapes and give him a nice mouth pucker. So let's say we want to exaggerate this. Again, we're gonna go back over to our morphs. If you go down and click this button, it's not gonna do anything. It already has the morphs open set to expression. So all we need to do now is go over here to mouth and uh, there are puckers in here and there are funnel shapes in here on the sub uh, selections here, but I'm just gonna stick up here in mouth and you're gonna see there's a depth option right at top. So we can go ahead and we can, you know, make this a little uh, deeper. And then also down here is a funnel high. So we can go through here and we can change the, you know, crank up that funnel high to really kind of over crank that funnel shape. So now that we have our over crank shape using our morphs, all we have to do is go back here. We're gonna click this quick update icon. And this time, instead of current slider, which is only for pucker up left, we want to do it uh, to all these sliders. So we're going to say split part. And all the vert changes that we made are now going to be propagated across all four shapes. Uh, left, right, upper, lower, or in this case, up, down. So you see it turned off link. So we'll go ahead and turn link back on. And now when we do our four pucker shapes, it's going to be a much more exaggerated pucker. And if we turn link off and we do the shapes individually, all of these individual shapes, left, right, up, and down, have been uh, exaggerated, respectively. So now let's talk about another option in here. If you hover over this, this is Edit Mesh. So let's go over here to Eyelid, and we're going to do Eye Wide L. So here is our Eye Wide L shape. We're going to crank that up to 100. And if we go down here to Expression Tools and click on this Edit Mesh button, that's going to throw us into Edit Mesh mode. So what I can do, is number one, I'm gonna turn on ignore back face so I can select multiple verts on the front side and it won't select verts in the back of the head. And then I'm gonna turn on soft selection. So again, if I wanna really exaggerate this eye open wide, we're gonna just drag select over here and select the verts in this area. Uh, we're gonna change that radius way down. Uh, and again, you can play around with the bias here for that fall off. So I'm gonna hit W on my keyboard and we're gonna move this top lid up. I'm gonna grab these bottom lid verts and we're gonna move those down. There we go. So now we have a new eye wide left. If we're done changing these verts, we can go out of edit mesh. And edit mesh did have a mirror option. If there's mirror buttons down there, uh, we don't need it in this case. If we do wanna again, propagate this out, all we gotta do is hit that mirror button. However, before we do that, we made changes, so we need to lock them in. So we're gonna do this quick update icon. We're gonna say current slider, hit okay. And if we wanna mirror this eye wide over to the other side, hit this mirror button and that will turn the right eye wide. So now we have a much wider eye wide here. And again, you can even link these. And here is our, our, our new edit mesh eye wide. Next, let's talk about this proportion option down here. So let's go down here to uh, the one we did earlier, jaw open. So if we do jaw open here, here is the jaw open shape. And then if we click on this proportion button, this is gonna give us access to bones. Specifically, you're gonna see face is selected over here. So these are our face bones that we can move around. If we wanna see the names, so you can go through here and you can select them. Um, if you wanna know what you're selecting, you can go in here to the bone menu, which is underneath the window, the bone manager is F3. And now you're gonna see Here's the upper teeth, here's the lower teeth, here's the tongue, here's the left and right eye. So any shapes that are giving you problems, you can go through and you can move these shapes around. Jaw open looks okay, actually. So I'm gonna say, you know what? We can hop out of proportion mode. Let's go back to our facial edit profile editor. We're gonna go in here to jaw open and let's go down here to the visim. I think uh, if we go in here to, for example, dental lip, if we move that in, you're gonna see, uh, I need to move some of these teeth around our lower teeth specifically. So we'll use proportion for that. We'll go ahead and hop into proportion. Again, we'll go back to the bone manager or just select these bones. Here we have the teeth selected, so I can hit W on our keyboard and we can go through here and we can just move these teeth back. You can see I, I can move them out if I want to, but now I'm just gonna move them back so that when this shape comes up, these teeth will scoop back a little bit and give us a little bit of a better look. So let's go back to our facial profile editor. Again, to lock this in, we're gonna hop out of proportion mode. We're gonna hit this quick update for our dental lip. And now when we do this dental lip shape, you're gonna see our teeth aren't in the way. This one's really great. We'll go back to jaw here. Sometimes when you do like a jaw right or a jaw left with a really exaggerated character, you'll see teeth start 
poking through on the on the cheeks this is a really awesome way to move your teeth around move your eyeballs around uh, in any of your shapes where those may be problematic uh, speaking of moving teeth and eyeballs around one thing i do want to mention is if you go out of edit expression so we're going to hop out of the facial profile editor we're going to go to our scene make sure our base body is selected and if we scroll down you're going to see there's an adjust bones option and here you can actually go through and move your body bones around and if you want to move your face bones around just go up here and select the face option and if you ever bring over a character or do a headshot character and like when the eyes are rotating they're kind of rotating out of the head or just things are behaving weird like their pivots not quite right you can go in here and you can choose face and then do auto position that will move these bone positions around to be in the center of the eyeball the the right position of the tongue and the teeth and that'll probably fix your issues so when you're done doing that just hop out of adjust bones now if you want to check your shapes one thing you can do is you can like go into edit facial and you can just go and grab uh, for example these individual muscle shapes here and you can move them around you can also go into the expressions tabs and just double click these uh, you can go to the modify panel and change your shapes down here uh, another really easy way to do this is we can go down here to the motion tab we can say uh, facial rig and there's a whole bunch of options in here so if you do like say standard linear this will go through all of the facial shapes and you can just kind of look for issues uh, jot them down and then go back through the facial profile editor and make the changes that you need to Let's go back down here to, uh, you know, we can do remove, restore, restore bind pose if we want. And let's go back here into the facial profile editor, which of course we just need to click this tab. We'll go back into edit expressions. So now let's talk about go Z. Essentially what we're gonna do is by go Zing, we can take the geometry, take it out of character creator so it's no longer associated with any uh, blend shapes or associated with any bones it's just geometry and then we can take the expression data or the shape geometry modify it however we want send it back it'll update those vert positions and then we just do quick update and we're going to use zbrush for that because you know zbrush is a very comfortable program for moving verts around so let's pick an easy one let's go down here again we're in edit expressions already we're going to scroll down to jaw and we'll go ahead and do that jaw open now in that character creator face pipeline, I did bring this up. For example, I went through and recorded my own face at 4K doing these shapes. So I can go through and I can look at how the face changes as these shapes are moving. And I can kind of look at my mouse shape and we can match that. So in order to use ZBrush for that, what we can do is basically go in here and dial in the shape that you want to change. Let's go ahead and put that up to 100. And with that activated, we're going to go ahead and open up ZBrush. Just to play it safe, what I like to do is go in here to preferences, go Z, clear cache files and I went ahead and put that button right here in my interface for easy access so when you see me doing that this is where you can find that button so we'll go back here to character creator we have our shape dialed in we're going to go down here to the expression tools section and hit this go z expressions it should because we cleared our cache files it should default to create I'm not going to change any of these other options we're just going to hit go z that's going to send that geometry over. Again, it's decoupled from bones and blend shape data. I can drag this out, go in here to edit mode, hit F to frame, and we're ready to go through here and start making changes. Now, if you want, you can double tap this dynamic here to make give you that full brush size range. And you're gonna see this is our jaw open. It is a symmetrical mesh, so I'm gonna tap X to go across X symmetry here. And uh, for example, in my, my reference, my jaw open, the lips, the corners of the lips are down a little bit here. Feel free to make whatever changes you want. Uh, again, however you change these verts is how the uh, jaw open shape is going to change. If we're happy with these changes, all we have to do, uh, again, these are all the sub tools. We're working on the CC base body. Uh, I'm gonna go up here to tool, go Z all. We're gonna send all these back and that's going to open character creator here. If you moved around any shapes that messed around with the eyelids, you can say regenerate the tear line and eye occlusion so that it fits your verts perfectly. We didn't do any of that and don't worry about the CC model scale. We're just going to hit this update button and what that's going to do is you're going to see the mouth is going to change its shape. The, the verts are going to move where they should. So now when I do my uh, jaw open, that's my new mouth shape. I want to lock this in so I'm going to hit this little uh, quick update here. And now that's locked in. So here's our new jaw open shape based on the vert changes that we did in ZBrush. So how easy is that to use? 
Now let's do an example where we want to split uh, parts. So we can do multiple shapes in ZBrush and then split them when we come back. So to show that off, let's go over here. Uh, well, first let's take this jaw open and we'll move that down to zero. And then we'll go in here to cheek and you're going to see we have cheek puff options down here. We'll turn on the link option and we're going to pull these up. So we're going to go ahead and do the left and right at the same time. So we'll do left and right cheek puff. We're going to, uh, if we hit go Z, it's going to default to relink. You can go ahead and leave it on relink if you'd like. All it's gonna do is move these vert positions into the new cheek puff positions that we want. It's totally fine. If for whatever reason it resets itself to create, if you wanna play it absolutely safe, you can go in here to tool, you can just say delete all, do another clear cache files, go back to character creator, hit go Z again, it'll default to create and you know you're sending over something clean and it's going to be in ZBrush and then you can just send everything back. So if you get in a weird state, that's a, just a real easy way to fix it. So we're again, we're back in ZBrush here. Here's our cheek puff shape left and right. We have the base body selected. I'm gonna tap X on my keyboard to go in here to X symmetry and use ZBrush as inflate or whatever to go through here and exaggerate these cheek puffs. You can go through here and use your move brush or your smooth brush. We'll turn that Z intensity down. There we go. So we got a new cheek puff here. Again, we've made changes. I'm gonna say go Z all. It's gonna go back into character creator. Uh, again, I can ignore all this. We're just gonna hit update. And now our new cheek puff shapes have been updated in here. And so to lock those in, we're gonna do this little electricity icon. Uh, this time we are gonna split the part left and right, hit okay. And so now we use ZBrush to do left and right shapes at the same time. Again, multiple shapes split the parts. So we'll turn link back on. And now here's our new cheek puff shapes. Now I should mention back in ZBrush, if you go in here to polyframe, you're gonna see you do have some awesome polyframes. So if you wanna work on the head without the eyelashes in the way, you can grab a little piece of the head, do control shift A and you know move these verts around without the eyelashes if you want. But the only thing you need to be careful of is make sure you do control shift tap and bring all of your verts back into view. You could even download the Z plugin clean tool utility. There is a show hidden all that you can run. It'll go through and make sure everything is shown on your verts and then hit the go Z all. Uh, just make sure all your verts are visible be before you go Z back to character creator. Oh, and another thing I want to mention, if I turn off polyframe, if you have face tools loaded, uh, if you go in here to texture map, you will already have utility textures in here. If you don't, if you go and watch this free character basis video, there's a download link in there. And in fact, we can go in here to texture import and I have this on our desktop the CC character base topology maps we have our utility maps in here I'm going to double click the head we can go in here to texture map load in the head and if we zoom in while we're making changes to our facial expressions you can load in this utility map just make sure texture is on and this will give you your landmarks so that you know that while you're moving your shapes around you're adhering to the proper edge loops on your face but of course, if you don't need that, you can turn texture off and you can go in here and you can say uh, texture off. Anyway, back in character creator, we'll go ahead and turn link off for our cheek puff. And let's talk about making custom sliders. So now there's a couple different ways to use this custom slider. You can use it to kind of dial in a zany face shape and then save all of those shapes as a single slider, make it a little bit easier to hit those shapes without having to go through and make a bunch of changes. You can just have a slider that changes a bunch of different expressions. You can also use it to add more uh, granular fidelity to your character's face that you can hand over to the animators and allow them to kind of make changes. So we'll do both. Uh, the first one we'll do is we'll just go in here to currently use, make sure we're all zeroed out. Uh, just kind of make a, uh, a dumbfounded look. So let's say moving all of these sliders, we're gonna now have to go into here to currently use. We have a bunch of different sliders available. So with all of these activated at their various points, we're gonna go in here to new slider and we'll go ahead and give this a morph name. Dumbfounded. Now, if you did have a, a an OBJ file, for example, that has this expression, say you modify this expression in an external program and you exported it as an OBJ, you can load it in here as a morph, you know, give it the name and then just choose a file uh, instead of using this, much like, much like with that FBX uh, batch import up here, which also can be used for an OBJ batch, batch import. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and say morph name dumbfounded. We're gonna use the current morph sliders that we have. You can load in a custom thumbnail in here if you wanna capture this and make your image that. Uh, we'll go ahead and hit okay. 
And now we're gonna have a new custom area over here. And now we have a dumbfounded look. So instead of going through there and changing a bunch of those different sliders, now I just have this one slider to make sure to hit this custom shape that we want. Now let's say we want to do like what I would call utility shapes where it's like I want to curl up the corners of the mouth into a little bit of a smile just to have a little bit of extra uh, fidelity. So while I'm doing my face shapes in iClone, I can call in this custom shape. Now, problem is right now, if I go in here to currently use that zeroed out, if I go in here to new slider and I'm like, okay, let's do a corner smile left, let's say. Uh, if I have current more selected, I don't have any current more styled in. So when I go down here and hit okay, it's gonna say no expression slider there, can't make one, sorry. We can work around that. So all we need to do is I'm gonna go in here to brow, we're gonna do that, the very first one, that brow raise inner left. We're gonna end up overwriting this shape, so it doesn't really matter what shape. All I wanna do is choose a shape that doesn't move the eyeballs or the tongue or the teeth, uh, just something that moves the face because I can always move that back. So we're gonna go ahead and say brow raise inner left, go in here to new slider, and now I'm going to make a, a new one. Where again, we're gonna call this corner smile L, and we're gonna use current morph, we're gonna hit okay. And now down here in our custom slider, we have a corner smile L, which of course raises the brow. While I'm in here, I'm gonna go ahead and click new slider, and we'll go ahead and make a corner smile right hit okay and now we have two kind of proxy placeholder uh, shapes in here so this is how i'm going to overwrite those shapes using go z first let's go back into zbrush uh, just to clear everything out i'm going to go through here we're going to say subtool delete all we're going to clear our cache files hit okay we're going to go back to character creator i'm actually going to hop out of edit expressions here we're going to go to our scene tab I'm gonna hold down shift and select all of the character's body parts here. We're going to go Z up here and we're going to say create. I'm gonna choose a pose and hit go Z. And even though our character is in a T pose in the expression editor, I need to use an A pose for this. Not exactly sure why I couldn't get the scales to match up the other way, uh, but it'll work, just follow along. So I'm gonna hit F to frame and here is our character in an A pose. So what I'm gonna do with this base body selected is I'm gonna go up to my history slider. You see these little uh, one, two, three here. These are history. I can hold down control and just tap the latest point in history. What it's gonna do is store these vert positions in ZBrush. So I can use a morph brush to morph back to a neutral face whenever I want. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go through here and I say delete all, and that's going to, st again, I still have those verts stored in memory. Uh, again, I'm gonna clear my cache files, just play it extra safe. We're gonna hop back into character creator and we're going to go back into our facial profile editor and we'll go back into edit expressions. So now I'm gonna go back to custom. We have our corner smile left that raises the eyebrow. I don't love that. So what I'm gonna do is overwrite this in ZBrush. So with corner smile left activated, I'm gonna go back in here and I'm gonna hit this go Z expression. So we're gonna send this over. Uh, it should default to create because we cleared our cache files. So leave all these at the defaults, hit go Z. And just like before, if I zoom in here on the head, uh, there is our brow raise for our shape that's supposed to be corner curls on our mouth. To get this back to neutral, all I have to do is go to BMG, go ahead and take your Z add and crank that up to 100, RGB you can turn off. This is our morph brush. If I go through here and use this, it'll morph back to the neutral position. Now, if you get too big, you can actually morph the hands back down to an A pose. I don't want that. So if you wanna play it safe, you can just hold down control, go in here to mask lasso, mask the head out, invert it, and then again, BMG, make a really big brush size and just morph your entire head back. So now our head for this shape is at a neutral position. So now let's go ahead and do those, the mouth corner curl for our character. In ZBrush, that's really easy. And again, I'm gonna tap X to go into X symmetry because I wanna do a left shape and a right shape. I'm gonna go to B, S, and we're gonna turn on spiral. So now down here in the corners of the mouth, if I hold down Alt, I can just tap and that'll kind of spiral these corners of the lips to kind of do a smile shape. We'll go ahead and use a move brush to kind of move that up. So now the corners, you know what? I'm gonna exaggerate this a little bit just to make it really obvious. So it's gonna be kind of a gross shape, but just bear with me. So we're gonna do a like kind of a joker corner smile here. Again, we'll use the move brush here. So there is the corners of our lips just turning up into a smile. Now back in Character Creator, remember, we're only updating the corner smile left. And unfortunately, there's not a mirror option in here. Luckily, we can take care of that left and right in ZBrush. So back in ZBrush, we just want the left side first. So I'm gonna go tap X to go out of X symmetry. And you know, looking from the character's point of view, this is the left side of his mouth. So we're gonna say BMG. We're going to morph out the right side of his mouth and we're just gonna send this over. 
So we're going to say go Z all. And then back in character creator, we're going to say update. And now our corner smile left, instead of having the eyebrow raised, is going to curl up the side of the mouth. Again, we want to lock this in. Go ahead and click this quick update. And now corner smile left will curl that left side of the mouth up. Perfect. So now let's do corner smile right. I'm going to crank this one up to 100. We're going to go back in a Z brush. I'm going to hit Control Z to undo. BMG, I'm going to morph out this side of the mouth now. I'm going to go Z all. I'm going to say update. There we go. Now again, my brow isn't touched, but the corner of the mouth uh, is curled up on the right side. We're going to hit quick update. And now we have a corner smile left and a corner smile right that both match. And again, you can see how quick and easy it was to update these verts and ZBrush. You could morph them out. Hopefully those steps made sense. So back in Character Creator, again, we have our custom sliders here with our dumbfounded face, our new corner smile left and right. And again, any of these shapes that we want to fix, I can go in there and fix. And again, don't forget these Visim shapes in here. You can go through here and change your speaking shapes. So I know things got a little bit weird at the end there with gozing over an A pose and then using morphs and stuff, but you can, hopefully you can see how fast and easy and powerful it is to, number one, go through and edit your verts for your individual shapes and how granular and specific you can get with those shape fixes, as well as being able to export those into ZBrush, make any changes you want, send it all back, hit a little quick update, split across multiple parts if you want to, and again, update these shapes. So. Again, the face tools playlist, it goes through face tools, but what I would use face tools for is again, just updating those wrinkle maps and baking those in. And then if you wanna make shape changes, use the facial profile editor to make those changes in Character Creator.